Jeremy and John are on the uh, speakerphone with us. Hi guys. Yes. They're at a conference. Call the Westfield Board of Public Works and Safety Meeting to order for August 28, 2019. Will the staff please know the presence of a quorum? We do have a quorum. Thank you. Action item number one are the minutes of July 24, 2019. Having had opportunity to review those minutes, are there any additions, corrections, or comments? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve action item number one, minutes from July 24th, Board of Public Works and Safety Meeting. Second. Have a motion made and seconded to approve action item number one, minutes July 24, 2019, as written. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On to action item number two, Westfield Boulevard Connector Project Signing Authority. Uh, so Westfield Boulevard Connector uh, will bid on September 10th. Uh, this is the signing authority for Jeremy. Um, when the bids come in are reviewed uh, for him to approve this project. Um, the engineer's estimate is 5.6 million. Uh, this is a federal exchange project, so we will be uh, refunded 90% for the construction costs. Okay. 90% of the construction costs, okay. Um, can you show me on the, I, I think I know where we're talking about, but can you show me? Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so this will be between um, Park Street and David Brown. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, our contribution is the land? Uh, we are paying 10% of construction costs, um, all of design, and um, the land. Yeah. You know, so I can spell, huh? Um, So it'll connect the roundabout near uh, Riverview. Mm -hmm. um, Shamrock. Yeah, Shamrock Drive. Um, and it'll come down, kind of snake around a little bit mm -hmm. um, down here uh, by the car lot. They yes. Will, the alignment will be just east of the car lot. So when we expand um, the next section between David Brown and 161st, the car lot will not be affected. Great. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Mm -hmm. Motion made and seconded to approve action item number two, Westfield Boulevard Connector Project Signing Authority. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On to action item number three, encroachment permit application Duke Energy 16156 Spring Mill Road. Adam, can you explain this one? Yeah. Um, as I'm aware, most of the, the Duke action items are all related to their own capacity upgrade project. Duke's working on upgrading their facilities in order to accommodate the growth in Westfield, particularly on the west side of town. So um, they have been proposing replacement of some of the existing poles in order to accommodate the growth. We, we have had a little bit, though, on the east side. Of, are there two or three? Duke's things in there. There's two. This one, uh, yeah. Same size, so. the same size of pole, like what? what? Yeah, same okay. size. Okay, so. first of all, is this, are the two questions. Are the poles going to the outside of the projected right of way as indicated on our thoroughfare plan? I am not sure on that. The, all, these all came through, were submitted to Gary for review and then he, for instructions, just forwarded them on to the board. All right, so. that question has to be answered. John, are you aware of this one? John is actually in. Jeremy, are you aware of the uh, encroachment application for Spring Mill Road for Duke? I am not, um, not specifically this one. I know that per the resolution, all of these are coming to the board for approval prior to well, this permit is approval. Uh, I think in all of these cases they are uh, replacing in in the existing location right. uh, for cold replacing no more place. Adding no more. Right. So what I mean, what Mayor's saying is that we they need to be planning ahead and doing this in accordance right. with our one sixty first. But yeah. I think 
at the next intersection north, they already did some that are going to have they're brand new and they're going to have to get moved up at 169th and Springfield yep. because Correct. they're not they're not operating. Yeah. And this isn't a surprise to Duke. I met with the president of Duke last week, and we're working on this throughout the whole city. So do we want a table items I three do. and four? We're only here to do what he just described. If he was doing that, he wouldn't even be here. If he was moving to the outside of our foreseen right of way, right, or moving into an easement, he wouldn't even have to come here. So, but isn't that what we want them to do? Yeah. Yes. So, are you saying that we I'm shouldn't saying, table it? We vote no. Yeah. Vote no. Okay. Well, the criteria <clears throat> is that any utility locates to the outside of the right of way of the thoroughfare plan, and secondly they need to be underground and we are going through some very tenacious talks with Duke to do just that um, and it is specifically apply, applies to when they we don't expect them to go through their whole system and do this but when they are relocating we do expect them to do this uh, citizens if you notice on grassy branch on 191 on 186 and other locations, Citizens is doing exactly this. And they have fire plugs out in the fields. Mm -hmm. And they'll never have to move them again. <clears throat> so what's pro proper motion, Brian? Deny? Yeah. So before, uh, we, uh, I think we, we need to make a movement on number three. Number four is uh, the, the one mayor, mayor United. Okay. Says, discussed with the president about it's the new poll that will provide power to the lift station which yes. is what will take the utilities the zero utilities out of Grand Junction and allow us to construct so I, I would recommend making two separate motions here or two separate actions on okay. number three and then separately number four I would make a motion to deny item number three I'll second that so I have a motion made seconded to deny action item number three encroachment permit application Duke Energy 16156 Spring Mill Road. All in favor of that signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion denied. On to action item number four encroachment permit application Duke Energy 271 Mill Street. I would make a motion to accept. I should. Action item number four. I will second that. Have a motion made and seconded to approve action item number four, encroachment permit application Duke Energy 271 Mill Street. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On to action item number five, Midland Trail Pedestrian Refuge at Cary Road proposal. Uh, so you may remember that uh, last year we applied for federal funding and subsequently received federal funding for uh, a pedestrian refuge island on Cary Road where the Midland Trail crosses this. <coughs> so uh, this is a proposal from JQOL Engineering to uh, do the design for that project. Um, the construction time is not uh, scheduled until 2023, but our hope is to get the design underway, have that done, have it shelf ready in case uh, federal funding opens up um, prior to 2023 and we can build it earlier than it's programmed currently. So what does that look like? Is Does the road widen and you just have a, yeah. there we go. So it'll, okay. it'll essentially remain the same width. Um, gotcha. The lanes will get choked down a little bit and there'll be an eight to 10 foot median uh, that'll, that'll okay. provide refuge for people in the cross. Gotcha. And it'll have additional lighting at the intersection to help with visibility. Now, just to be 100% correct, <laughs> we're not going to use those stop signs. Oh, uh, and this is just a rendering that they did. Please, so, yeah, they yeah. need to. We've yeah. been through that. Yeah. <laughs> that right, that's, Joel? That's why people get hit right. yes, at a crossing yes. because of yeah. traffic stopping in the other way, not stopping. So, yeah, yeah, remove those please, before any public presentation. Okay. I, I, I might think, add I just be, because, huh? So I think we agree. <laughs> yeah. I might add just a point of information because you all deal with uh, 
these 80-20 programs and all the federal and all this. There is a proposal by NDOT to uh, remove all of the federal processes on these potential projects. It's just a proposal right now where we would exchange uh, the federal dollars for 90% of the st of state dollars, which should give us a lot more flexibility in proposals, cost, process, and even the time that we can we can do it. Mm -hmm. So it's if that goes through, we might be able to change dates on this somewhat. It's very complicated, but it's promising. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion on action item number five. Make a motion to approve action item number five, Midland Trail Pedestrian Refuge at Cary Road. Second. A motion made and seconded to approve action item number five, Midland Trail Pedestrian Refuge at Cary Road proposal. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Anything that you would like discussion on the consent agenda, sir? No, Make I'm familiar with it. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda as posted. Second. Have a motion made and seconded to approve the consent agenda. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On to department reports. First up is fire. Uh, some big changes from July uh, 19 to July 18. We noticed an uptick of 25% increase in call volume from July of 18 to July of 19. Uh, part of that was an increase in medical runs. We had uh, less fire calls and more medical runs during that month. Um, we responded to 352 incidents in the month of, Sorry. of July. So when you say 25%. So in July of 18, we had 281 calls. July of 19, we had 352. Right, and so so, so how do we so how do we take into consideration the growth in population over the, the that 12 month period? Yeah, it's, reflecting this is in, nothing that we're concerned about. It's just right. I understand it, but numbers. I think if you just put numbers. Sorry, this is my argument all the time. I just mm -hmm. think that we need to put numbers around it that explain runs are going to go up because we've got more people here than we yeah. had before. So when we use those numbers, I just want to be really careful about how we do that. Sure. And then I'm, I'm going to get into that. It's, it's broken down and, and it will make sense. It's not just due to population. Uh, well, I'm sure, I'm sure construction not. Construction of right. the school increased some alarms mm -hmm. um, just due to construction going on. Uh, we uh, are spinning up and really working heavily with our community paramedicine program they had 46 visits whereas in july we didn't have those right so everything is explained by uh, what we're doing um, part of that is an increase in population um, we're not concerned as a 25 percent increase based on last year um, in our, our call volume from month to month because uh, projections were still about at six percent which has been the norm over the last five or six years does that make sense the, I think what Kate's trying to say is 25 percent sounds huge how can you show that maybe on a per capita basis where that is not a normal or that that is an expected increase because 25 percent well, the paramedicine would be a big chunk that's of the twenty-five percent because we yeah. didn't have that a year ago. Yeah. Okay. And that's so. going to pay investment now pays off in the long Absolutely. run. Absolutely. All right. So I mean, that, that's the so kind of explanation I want to make yeah, sure is on the record. More, and you can I'm do that. But there's good. also two yeah. other things you mentioned: the the false alarms. Mm -hmm. And your chief has given me a proposal on how we're going to address false alarms. Mm -hmm. Secondly, is I see a large increase in medical runs to just two or three nursing homes in the city that at first blush it appears to me that there needs to be uh, some accountability of that on their part and yeah. I know you're also working on that. So part, part of that Mayor is we're uh, with our community paramedicine program paying visits to these facilities to educate them you know we're not your um, 
resource to call and do lift assists, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. That's that's your staff's um, problem to, to manage. Uh, we're here for emergency responses. And so through uh, some education at the facilities, we're hoping to see a decrease in those uh, call types. But yeah, <laughs> uh, the numbers are shocking, but uh, let's kind of dive into it a little bit like from the fire department perspective that wasn't out of the realm of, of possibilities um, anticipated and easily absorbed yeah uh, and, um, the the it's hard to base our nature of work on per capita uh, that does have an effect but we can't tell you if it's going to be a, a one for one or half a percent um, that's just not how the emergency world works. Um, we also provide coverage to the township, not just the city. So there's there's that as well. Our square footage. But that's a constant change. Yeah. As we look from that's one year to year another, but that's a constant. Change, so but, nothing's changed there. But, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, property loss. We did have uh, one fire that was outside of the city limits. It was in the township. Um, we did. Uh, get an arson arrest out of that and it goes to trial in October so just a heads up on on that breakdown per district uh, again the, the numbers are just based on what the numbers were in reference to uh, the previous year and again we can explain these uh, a 41 percent increase in district 2 uh, that's just a visit from a community paramedicine. They just happen to live in that district, so it's lumped up into that district, uh, if that makes sense. So when you're doing this community, mm -hmm. you count that as a run? Yes. See, maybe we, we should re-examine that. Don't even answer me, just because it's skewing your numbers. <clears throat> and if the public looks at these numbers without your explanation, mm -hmm. they're going to go, see? I told you we're growing too fast. That's what Kate's trying to say. Yeah, and, and we recognize you need, that. It's, well, uh, but you need to develop your the, explaining the, that. The, yeah, the paramedicine program is so exciting. Not having that with the chief and talk to him about it. I mean, there's so much good there, and I'm thrilled that it's that we're doing it. I just think we want to maybe, as the mayor said, maybe break those numbers out so we can really focus on the the success of that program. Sure. Uh, in, in the report, we'll break it down to look a little different. We'll still do an overall count, but justify it based on um, these were the breakdowns of this program and that program. Yeah, that'd be wise. That would be good because it's a the program is wonderful. And you need to take credit for it. Very good. Uh, Grand Park. Our call volume at Grant Park in comparison to the last year went down. Um, just the snapshot in 18, we had 15 incidents out at Grand Park. This year we had 11 uh, during that time frame. Uh, and here's, here's a breakdown of uh, an overall high level arching look of uh, medical uh, service calls, the alarms, uh, hazardous material incidents, and the fires. Uh, you can see in comparison that 63% uh, of our calls were medical. Uh, what percent? 63%. Uh, typically, the national average is running about 70%. Uh, so for the month of, of July, we're actually down based on hmm. the, the national trend. Um, uh, the alarm data. Uh, 14 residential, 21 commercial, and uh, we get into some mutual aid stats. Um, breaking the mutual aid stats, this is broken down into uh, how many times did we uh, give aid to an outside agency and how many times did an outside agency give aid to us. Uh, we also broke it down into um, uh, automatic aid versus a mutual aid. Automatic aid being um, it's already set up in the dispatch system that it's a recurring thing what we're going to send the appropriate piece uh, in a timely manner versus mutual aid uh, we're going to go out of district because you don't have that piece however you're going to reciprocate and send us a piece that we don't have that, that kind of a deal 
the biggest thing to take away from uh, uh, this in, in my mind is on the fire side, we rendered aid to outside agencies 30 times and we received aid six. So we're, we're giving more than we're receiving. Uh, on, the, on the EMS side, uh, we gave aid five times and received aid 18 times. So um, we're working well with our partners is what it all boils down to. Um, we're we're uh, getting help appropriately when, when the people need it. Um, and then uh, care facility calls. So uh, a comparison from last year to this year, uh, as the mayor was speaking to, you can definitely see that there's some folks there that we were paying more visits to uh, than, than others. Uh, some of them are pretty uh, consistent. Um, the Wellbrook um, uh, facility, we had an increase and uh, the kindred care, um, we had an increase, but some of the others are just right there, pretty consistent with, with the, the, the typical. And so with the community paramedicine piece, the 46 visits in the month of July, of those we only had two that were um, follow up or recurring. So if you remember from a couple months past, uh, we had like 17 uh, in, in a time frame early on. So we're really driving that number down. We did more wow, visits in July than we did in the first quarter. And we also had the recurring that we drove down from 17 to two. So that's all I have. Any questions? Do you know where you stand on your commercial building inspections? Uh, they're wrapping up. Uh, as, as we speak, we put a deadline on those visits being done by October, so it gives us time to do our, our re-inspects. Um, each shift has, has got it down to about 10 to 20 per shift, uh, not per station, but 10 to 20 per shift. So out of the 614 that we have, we're down to like 60. So uh, getting very close to wrapping that up. Um, coming up here pretty quick. Very good highly effective it has been yes it really has been okay thank you mm -hmm. chief rush yeah um sorry i had to step up for a second did the, the, the uh, consent agenda get approved yes sir I, I thought you may want to speak to that but <laughs> i did i just said i just want to mention these two officers mm -hmm. um, yeah, i don't like it when you step out well, I have a daughter okay. in Norway All right. experienced an issue with her Airbnb. So All right. First of all, That's okay. But, um, yeah, so it's 7 o'clock there. They just uh, they just went by ferry from somewhere in the north part of uh, Norway to an island north, further north, three and a half hours across the Atlantic. And um, the Airbnb, the, the owner's not... Uh, Answered a phone call and it's locked up. So oh, God. <laughs> she's like panicking. Yeah. But call, anyway, call Dad. Yeah. Call Dad. So that's that's when I get my phone call. It's All right. Um, so anyway, uh, we have two um, conditional offers out there on these two officers. Um, the first one is Winu Sharif. Um, he is an IU um, IU Academy graduate. IU graduate. Uh, majoring in psychology. Um, he's from Hobart, Indiana. Um, and the other one is Derek Aldridge, who is uh, with Elkhart Police Department right now, and he's been there for eight and a half years. So um, they're both academy trained. Um, looking forward to grabbing them. They're, they're both, uh, in my opinion, outstanding candidates. And we just got a few things to, um, as far as the conditional requirements, a couple things to check off, and then they'll, they'll start here <coughs> soon. Um, Last month you approved Caleb Gebhardt, and he starts September 3rd. And so that completes the 2019 hiring week. We were able to hire what we needed for this year, um, bearing that we don't lose anybody else. Um, so that puts us to 55 officers at the end of the year, and that's what we were supposed to be at. Um, kind of an exciting time. We've got a lot of good things happening right now. Uh, last night, I know this isn't part of this, uh, this board, but um, I just, it, it's the neatest thing I've ever seen. Uh, I wanted to share that we went, we did Tippecop last night. 
at the Texas Roadhouse, and oh. we had uh, eight officers there, all in uniform, on their days off, mm. waiting tables, um, <laughs> busing tables, and um, so really neat. what it meant is they were they were bringing rolls to the tables. <laughs> <laughs> don't let them handle the food, right? They don't. Yeah, just the rolls. They got a little caught up when they had to take orders. <laughs> um, but I tell you what, it, it was it was so cool. Um, they had a lot of support by the, some of the other officers mm -hmm. and their families came, went there and Texas Roadhouse loved it. Um, but they raised well over $2,300 for uh, Special Olympics. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, um, nice. They, the neat thing, and, and what impressed me so much, is how they all get along. You know, eight officers for one shift, um, and they're just clicking on all cylinders, and, and uh, um, they're doing it for not themselves, but for others. On their yeah. Account. Sorry, I must. I knew about. It. I just couldn't make it. it, it that's was, that's a cool thing. It's just it another really neat, really neat. thing. I think that things. A lot of those things. I know that some things happen in other places, but I think uh, we're very blessed in Westfield to to have the uh, public service people that we have and the things that they do and the outreach to the community is just uh, another part of what makes Westfield a great place to live. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, September 10th, we have the, the ninth annual Jake Leary Community Day from eight from five to eight at Quaker Park. Um, we do have on next Tuesday, which is the third, we have Mike Allen. Um, his uh, we're celebrating his retirement on that date at Public uh, Safety Building at three o'clock. Um, the next retirement is Kim Daniels, who leaves on October 15th. There'll be more to come on that. Um, our next Citizens Academy, which I believe is it's either the 9th or the 10th Citizens Academy, starts tomorrow. Uh, is our first one. And uh, looking forward to that. Um, next Wednesday, uh, we, we honor the volunteers uh, with an appreciation night at the event center on Wednesday, September 4th, where Randy might be there, I'm not sure. Planning on being there. <clears throat> so, just a way to say thank you. Um, other than that, everything's everything's going really well. Very good. That's all I got. All right. Thanks, Chief. Public Works. Jeremy, still there? Yeah. Sorry, Vicky made me uh, mute the phone, and I forgot. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, you probably noticed we doesn't build bridge. The other night, <laughs> um, I was there. Yeah. That, that went really well. Uh, we are also now under officially under contract with Wilhelm as of the REC meeting on Monday. Uh, Wilhelm is the construction manager that will manage um, Grand Junction Plaza. So that process is moving forward. Um, so there's more to, more to come on that. We're still very very hopeful and intending to have some shovels in the ground later this year, either in November or early December. Um, resurfacing, and Dustin can give you the details, but uh, resurfacing is well underway. Uh, we've uh, done some work in Merrimack and No, and begun in Centennial. Uh, uh, he can probably give you more details on that. Um, currently, John is in the awards luncheon, uh, accepting uh, an award for uh, us receiving uh, the award for Green Community of the Year for our size for the state of Indiana. So we've uh, we've won that a couple couple times in the past, um, uh, and uh, won again this year. So that's that's exciting. Um, other than that, we are um, we are doing pretty typical maintenance stuff. Uh, we do have a, uh, a, a micro surface application uh, going down on the Monon Trail tomorrow. Maybe today, starting this afternoon and tomorrow. Uh, what that is is uh, basically it's a it's a heavy duty seal coat that will uh, prolong the life of those trails. Um, so we're starting at 146th Street and doing the oldest sections first. Uh, we plan on uh, programming that out over the next few years to be our primary uh, focus on maintenance of the trails. So um, other than that. Uh, We've got Westfield Boulevard construction project that you guys voted on earlier that uh, 
we'll start construction later this year. That's an exciting project we've been working on for a long time. Um, and so I guess with that, if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. <clears throat> Okay. Good. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you, Jeremy. Yeah. Any business on the agenda, sir? I do not. Okay. Hearing none, I'll uh, make a motion to adjourn. Second. Have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All in favor of signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned.